And then our last FBS game before we do our FCS game, which also an electric slate there. But we've got the number six Ohio State Buckeyes, three-point favorites on the road at number nine Notre Dame. This game carries an over-under of 55.5 points. It kicks off at 7.30 p.m. Eastern on NBC. And this is College Game Day's pick. You can go ahead and read my write-up on it. Kelly does the NBC prime times, and I do the College Game Day prime times. And, well, this one had a little bit of overlap this week. But I wrote about Ohio State and Notre Dame, and we're going to talk about it a little bit in a little bit more brevity than I went into. If you're, if you're looking for really in-depth, I'm talking position by position. Uh, I have about 1,300 words on this matchup at thelines.com. Now, I went to South Bend last week for a little bit of Notre Dame scouting. Kidding about scouting, but it was a lot of fun. I went with my dad. It was a really enjoyable time. Uh, Notre Dame Stadium is one of the cathedrals of college football, one of the great places to see football played there. Uh, and I love the movie Rudy, so it was really cool to see all the, all the bits from that in person. And to be honest, I saw some holes with Notre Dame. They had some trouble defending the run, specifically between the tackles against Central Michigan, who's not overly explosive. And then they had a couple of guys run free too. And, and Central Michigan had their backup quarterback in there. Bird Manuel Jr. was sick and didn't play. And then they couldn't connect on those, but there were some receivers that were open down the field. Going to be honest, Ohio State's not going to be missing those downfield throws. Those are going to be long connections. But Ohio State has their own holes too. Tackles aren't great. Josh Simmons, the transfer from San Diego State, he's committed three penalties and allowed three pressures already this year against some really suspect competition. And he grades out really poorly in PFF's run blocking grades. Um, I think that's the biggest loss of uh, or biggest weakness along their offensive line. And then on the defense, the pass rush gets pressure, but they're not getting home. Jack Sawyer and JTT, they, they just need to close the deal. They're getting there. They're putting pressure on, but there's not been a lot of sacks to show from it. And, and God, they played Youngstown State. There needs to be some sacks on the stat sheet here that just aren't there yet. So a couple of concerns to Ohio State. Now, if Notre Dame's front four can get pressure on Kyle McCord and they don't allow for time for those deep routes to develop specifically with Marvin Harrison Jr., Mecca Ibuka, it could be a really, really long day for Ohio State. Um, but I think the Buckeyes can negate that by rushing with Trey Henderson. He's a home run hitter. They can run it in between the tackles with gap schemes and zone schemes. And he, he's a threat to, to hit a home run on every single time he touches the ball, just like Audrick Estime across the way. But I think Ohio State's run defense is really solid. Benjamin Morrison, he's an All-American corner. He's going to see plenty, plenty of Marvin Harrison Jr. And they are going to target him and, and make sure that he gets involved in the game. But I'm looking at Emeka Ibuka and Julian Fleming and uh, some of the other guys here to have better opportunities, maybe bigger opportunities in this game. I think they're going to have to step up pretty big for the Ohio State offense to continue its role. And the Buckeyes have given up yards through the air, but they do limit explosive plays. That's part of Jim Knowles' aggressive defense. They like to blitz. They like to rush the passer. And they'll give you the short dink and dunk yards because they're backing their corners off and safeties off to give them a little bit more of a berth there. Uh, so, but... You know, Sam Hartman, he's going to take what he's given. He's a very, very good quarterback, and he's also extremely capable down the field throwing the ball. He had a couple long touchdown passes, Kelly, against Central Michigan that were just, like, incredible. The, the placement on it, his receiver didn't have to accelerate or decelerate. It was in the, You couldn't hand it to him any better than Sam Hartman was hitting his receivers down there. Even though that receiving core isn't great, uh, he's making it work with them anyway. I think it's going to depend on how awake Ohio State defensive backs are. So far, they've been playing well. But last year, Denzel Burke, some of these other guys were getting burned from time to time. People know I'm an Ohio State fan. I've talked about it on other podcasts. I've talked about it on this show. I post about it on Twitter every now and then. What people don't know is that growing up, I grew up in Indianapolis, Indiana. Everybody in Indiana either loves or hates Notre Dame. I like Notre Dame. Notre Dame was my – I always liked Ohio State. I like Notre Dame too. This game is special to me. It was special last year. I like this one. I am not a Notre Dame fan now. I got to a certain age where I was like, you can't be both. You got to pick. And I picked Ohio State. Um, and it's worked out, and I don't regret it for a minute. But Notre Dame always has and probably always will hold a special place in my heart because I grew up in Indiana. So it just means something to people that grew up in Indiana. It's a national brand. It's different when you grow up in Indiana. So uh, this game is exciting for me. It's fun for me. And it's nervous. It makes makes me very nervous because Notre Dame's a very good team. And Ohio State's going to struggle, I think, uh, in certain aspects of this game, at certain periods of this game. How are they going to re react to that adversity that they, quite honestly, haven't faced yet this year? And so there's a lot of unknowns. This is the game of the week. And it's currently the number two highest rated game of the entire season by my watchability scores behind only the Red River shootout. So it's going to be awesome. It's the third straight week I have a new number one, as I talked about earlier, uh, in my power ratings, that is. 
it's really starting to feel like maybe nobody wants that honor uh, to be the number one team. Uh, this week, it is the Buckeyes almost by default because other contenders aren't playing very well. And Ohio State had a pretty good outing against Western Kentucky last year. I have Ohio State minus six and a half. It's a 67% win expectancy for the Buckeyes. The Buckeyes offense is number four uh, behind three Pac-12 units. And the defense has been very impressive this year. They are now number five. As I mentioned earlier during the Penn State-Iowa game, that's only the fourth best in the Big Ten, though, and the third best in the Big Ten East. Uh, so you've, you've got number five nationally and number three in your own division. Man, that's tough. There's some good defense happening in, in the Big Ten East. Ohio State is outscoring its opponents by 13 and a half points per game more than would be expected of the average top 25 FBS team against the Buckeyes schedule. That is sixth best in the country. This game is currently projecting as Ohio State's most difficult of the entire season. Yes, more difficult than the home game against Penn State. Yes, more difficult than the road game at Michigan to end the season. Those projections could change, but that is how it's projecting right now. If we get the Kyle McCord and Buckeye offense that we got against Western last week, I don't think the Irish are going to be able to get enough stops. Um, If we don't, it's a different story. On the other side of this, Notre Dame, they have the number six offense and the number nine defense. So all four of the units in this game are top 10 nationally. This is why it has a watchability score that's second to only the Red River shootout when you're looking at every single game involving an FBS team this year. The Irish are three points better now than they were projecting to be at the start of the preseason, um, but their corresponding ranking is actually one spot lower than it was in the preseason. That just goes to show you how much we've condensed at the top of the power ratings. Very little separates these teams uh, based on in-season data. The Buckeyes are getting the edge here when we factor in the preseason priors, um, even with this game being in South Bend. I have Ohio State minus six and a half. It's a 33% chance Notre Dame pulls off the upset, a one in three chance. Uh, it would be one of the best wins of the season so far for any team i'm excited i'm nervous and if you are just a college football fan i don't care if you like either of these teams or you hate both of these teams if this game doesn't get you excited i gotta ask are you really a college football fan because this has the makings to be a really really good one i hope it lives up to the expectations because they are very very high it's going to cap off um, a great week four and this one's going to be on the main screen of my five tv setup that is for sure don't text me don't call me Don't email me. I I might just turn my phone off, to be honest, during this game, because I will be that into it and that nervous uh, from a fan perspective. But the numbers support Ohio State, too. We'll see if they're right. Yeah, if we're out in ourselves, I've talked about it before on the show. I'm also an Ohio State fan, born and raised in Cleveland. You know, they're they're my team. I have an Ohio State jersey over my shoulder. And I'm with you. It, It scares the crap out of me. Look, I dedicate probably close to 80 hours a week to college football learning it, knowing all the teams. I pride myself on on exploring and doing a lot of research on all 133 FBS teams. But I know Ohio State better than I know any other team, and it's not particularly close. So it's a game that I am nervous about. Uh, you know, the, your numbers support it. It's, there's a lot of buyback when we get to three and a half for Notre Dame, uh, but it also won't go through minus three. So, like, you know, it's it's a very – we're at the point. This is the number that the market agrees is fair and correct, minus three in favor of the Buckeyes. The look ahead was a plus eight, plus ten earlier on. You, you kind of name it. It's, it's been all over the place there. And honestly, if you're on Notre Dame, take them out right. Take them over the points. Don't lay the three. Take them out right. They're either going to win this game or they're not going to win this game. It's – well, <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Usually the team that scores the most points wins. No, it's they're, they're either going to win this game handily or lose this game handily. I really don't see many outcomes in which the Irish lose by two to three points. I don't see a lot of uh, if outcomes in which Ohio State lose by two or three points. If this is stepping away from the betting aspect and looking more into maybe the predictions aspect or whatever, I think this game is going to be greater than a one-score finish in one direction or the other be it Ohio State winning or be it Notre Dame winning. I don't think that this is going to close a super tight game in the point margin. Either Notre Dame comes out and they control this game, and Sam Hartman's able to connect on those deep shots, and Audrick Estime is breaking off 45-yard runs, or Ohio State comes out and Marvin Harrison dominates or Trevion Henderson dominates. Maybe the defense gets a score. I don't see a world in which this is a three-point game one way or the other. Feel free to clip that for freezing cold takes later on. Now you talk about the home field advantage. And I know most people are saying, well, this is in Notre Dame. It's or it's at Notre Dame. It's in South Bend. It's going to be a very hostile environment. I'm going to break it to you. It's probably not. I'm going to go out and say it's probably going to be minimum 40% of Ohio State fans. I'm not the only one saying that. It, I... I think still, Brett, you're I don't disagree with the Ohio State fans travel. Um, my father in law is a Notre Dame fan and alum. Um 
it's possible it's 40% in Ohio State, I guess. Uh, I still think if you're giving Ohio State the option, you want to play at home or you want to play on the road in this one, they take the home game. Of course. Uh, I, sh- I, of course. I still think that there's a significant challenge to playing this game at Notre Dame at night. Uh, I know these are both two northern teams used to playing in the cold. I think just given Ohio State's style of play and what they like to do through uh, through the air, it's better they're playing this game in September from Ohio State's point of view than if it was November. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and again, Ohio State's used to playing outside in November, their, their home stadium. Uh, but y- yes, I, I hear your point. Ohio State fans travel well. It's a big game. It's not far to travel for most Buckeye fans. But I still think Notre Dame recognizes the significance of this game too, and their fans do. This is one of really three marquee games this year, if you will. USC, Clemson being the other ones. Although that Duke game next week is actually starting to look a little little better every single week uh, as Duke is going to get better. Um, they're not looking ahead to that. That's not where I'm going. It's going to be a difficult environment. It might not be the most raucous that Ohio State plays in all year, a.k.a. at Michigan at the end of the year, but it's still going to be one where I think – Kyle McCord, it's really first his first true big road test. I know they played at IU to start the year, and playing on the road in conference is hard. I get that. This is going to be more difficult than that. This one's at night, and you have the eyes of the college football world on you in this game. I don't care who you are. That's pressure. Hopefully, for Ohio State fans' sake, he's able to rise up to that and meet that, but that is pressure, and this is the biggest game of his life to this point, and he's playing the most important position on one of the most talented teams in the country who the expectation is to win the Big Ten and to win the national championship. That's a lot for a kid, and so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, l- Let me walk it back a little bit. It, it, I still stand by the fact that it, this is going to be close to a split crowd. Of course, no, it's not going to be an easy nice environment to him not by not by any stretch but I just think for those thinking it's going to be a complete overshot Notre Dame is just beating down them like a Penn State whiteout I think the crowd's gonna be a bit more split and more friendly than that agreed